We might have ourselves a true flagship killer here, and this is the all new OnePlus 10T. By the end of this video, you're gonna find out why this phone is a really good deal compared to what OnePlus has been offering in the past, and they're kind of getting back to their roots here. Let's discuss why. All right, so let's talk about something exciting before we get going, the price point. 649, and actually right now, if you order this phone, you can get the 16 gig of RAM with 256 gig for 649, they're doing a little sale right now. So go check it out at OnePlus's website. By the way, OnePlus did send this out for review. However, I was not paid you know, to basically say anything positive. So whatever sucks about this phone, I will tell you that as well. Now, this phone also has a very traditional box and that's a good thing. And why? Because OnePlus doesn't sell quite as many phones as other carriers. So they're still providing you with things like, or other carriers, other manufacturers, they're still providing you things like chargers in the box, the red cable club, you're getting yourself everything you would want in the box. You don't gotta go buy other accessories. Now, what's really important about this, this is a key spec here, is this is a 160 watt Super VOOC charger. 160 watts, this thing charges in ridiculous time, like some of the fastest I've ever seen on a smartphone. That's important. Also, a, a couple other key specifications for 649, you know, how many Samsung phones or even other Android manufacturer phones are offering you the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 CPU? You also get a 3D cooling system on board. You're also getting a 50 megapixel plus 8 plus 2 megapixel triple camera setup on the rear. It's quite shiny as well. And also, you're just getting a nice overall package here, a premium feeling phone for that money. Like, this feels like the only couple cuts they made, I'll talk about later, is kind of the back material. But everything else is pretty much thousand dollar range in terms of specification. So OnePlus is getting back to the roots here, offering you that like really premium kind of specification at a much, much lower price point. So that's what excites me about this one and why I even wanted to make this video. So what are you getting for the money? Off to the edges. You are getting yourself a plastic frame. So this is kind of where OnePlus makes some cuts as they decide they're not going to put, you know, the ultra aluminum or anything like super you know stainless steel nothing like that but what they did do a really good job with is making it kind of feel and look that way so also you'll notice right here at the bottom we do have our sim card slot right there usb-c microphone hole and also speaker grill but it's very uniform so if you look at the, t the bottom take a look at the top they're actually a perfectly matching design there also right there you'll see that Pretty shiny edges can fool most people into thinking this phone is actually the OnePlus 10 Pro, which is a little bit more premium on the back material. I feel like you're gonna crack it or break it as much. It's more of a practical everyday feel. So I'm actually okay with it. It kind of reminds me of a the phones that are more premium feel like more like a luxury vehicle or something. And then this is more a very nice newer vehicle, but it's just not the top trim. You, you get what I'm saying? That's kind of how this phone feels. And it's still beautiful though. So. Really, I think they did a good job with, you know, cutting back on the material to get the price down, but focusing on what's on the inside more than just what's on the outside. A very good looking device overall though, and I think for the money, you're not gonna get much better here. Now, on other Android phones, including Galaxy A series, for example, you are getting OLED displays on board, but for this one, you're getting a fluid AMOLED display. It gets very bright indeed. You know, you also have a lot of different modes like image sharpeners on video enhancements, with the color, you can do stuff like that. You have HDR video modes. You can change the screen color modes to Natural Vivid Pro. So it's got a lot of tweaking you can do with this phone. Also, we got the light mode, which a lot of people don't like for the video, so I'm gonna switch it back to the dark. And I just gotta say that, you know, you're getting the 120 hertz adaptive refresh. It could actually adapt between 120 hertz, 60 hertz, and 90 hertz. So it's not going all the way down to something like 10 hertz, but still, it can switch between those. And that's a very good thing because you don't want to be consuming too much battery when you don't really need it. So I got to say, overall, you're getting a really solid display for the money. I think you're going to be a very happy person if you buy this phone at 649 because you're just going to get what you need for this price point. And not only that, this phone actually has a pretty large display. So you're looking at 6.7 inches. Now to get 6.7 inches on say an Apple device, you're gonna pay $899 on maybe the upcoming 14 Plus, 14 Max, maybe $999 on that. We'll see 
what they offer, but you know, the Pro Max is gonna be well over a thousand. So you're looking at 649 for the same size panel here. Very good. This is 1080 though, so do keep that in mind. It still comes in at around 394 pixels per inch. On a phone, I think that's still fantastic. You can barely tell the difference. Most people have agreed at this point that we don't technically need 4K displays and a thing that sits in our pocket because you know the pixels are so crammed that most people are not even gonna be able to make out the difference between this and something like a 2K panel, for example. So when it comes to the actual platform, you are getting Oxygen OS 12. This should get the Oxygen OS 13 when it becomes available. In addition to that, it's actually 12.1 on here, Oxygen OS 12.1, but you should be getting the Android 13 version as well. Now, one of the areas a lot of people have been annoyed with OnePlus is the slower updates when they used to be faster updates. So I hope they improve that here with this phone. Maybe that's why it's cheaper. We'll have to see how it goes along the line. But overall, you still get the OnePlus shelf on here. You are getting a nice you know, app tray on board. It's pretty simple. I mean, they kind of have these squared icons now. I'm not sure everybody's a fan of that, but the good thing is you can change that. You can go down here and they got a lot of features down here like transitions, layouts, widgets. And this is important because you don't really have to download a launcher for this phone. OnePlus makes a lot of nice little tweaks. So you don't got to go downloading extra Android launchers onto the phone. You can also change app animation speeds right there. So a lot of smart customizations, not overbearing amount. And if you don't really want to use them, you kind of don't. The phone is kind of ready to go right out of the gate, but they do have some nice ones here. So if we can agree and continue, you can see that they have different icons you can change. So if you're into the more pebble look, you can do that. If you're into the more default look, the material style, and you can make your own custom art icons as well. So a lot you can do, change the color out. I kind of like red, red for the Nick Ackerman channel. You can go to the font in displays, fingerprints. You can even change the fingerprint animation. So you can see a lot available. One thing I don't like is that there's constantly pop-ups telling you about data collection and privacy, things like that. Um, that's probably gonna annoy some people. OnePlus does this because there was a scandal back in the day where they were caught collecting too much data. And now everybody wants to know what's going on. So they're kind of like letting you know on every single thing, look at this is what's going to be collected. This is how it's going to be used. So you just know they're kind of letting you know because they don't want to be perceived as someone is just stealing all your information, something like that. So they're telling you what they're using it for. Most of it is to improve the product experience and stuff like that. But overall, software is solid. It's smooth. It's fast. It works well. And actually, I think with this newer chip, the phone actually runs even better than the prior OnePlus 10 Pro that I've, I've tried. But what's really dope about this phone is that you do get yourself the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 on board, a capability of having up to 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now this is the 8, but it's still good enough in my experience. The thing is, is that, you know, with these current phones, with these new Snapdragon chips, the 8 Plus Gen 1 specifically, I haven't found them to get, to get warm at all. I, I really love that. They've been listening to the complaints about Android phones just getting too hot. And the OnePlus 10 Pro got hot. This one, barely even feel it. I don't feel anything actually. So I love that and I think you will too. And the reason why is because nobody wants a super warm phone with their finger. That is just uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good. And it makes you think the phone's overheating. It feels inefficient. It's just lame. I don't like that. So I love this, that it doesn't really do that anymore. This also is gonna clock those clusters at a pretty high 2.02, 2.75, and 3.19. So they are clocked at pretty high gigahertz, which means that things are just gonna fly on this phone. In addition to that, OnePlus already has very fast animations and stuff like that. But not only that, you are gonna get yourself the Adreno 730 for games and a good cooling system. So this is gonna be a boss gaming phone as well. So if you guys are looking for a phone that's just really a powerhouse, for under 700, you gotta take a look at this one. You're gonna be pretty impressed with the performance. All right, so let's take a look at the cameras here. So you do have yourself that 50 megapixel right here. You can also go into the ultra wide and you can zoom in 2X on a telephoto. So they're giving you, they're covering all the bases here. You're not getting ridiculous zoom. You cannot expect that for under 700 to get like 50X zoom, stuff like that and have it be very strong. OnePlus had to make some cuts, but they provided you with a very good main sensor, which is gonna give you really nice 4K 60 video. It's not 8K, but it's solid, and I think you're gonna enjoy it quite a bit. I actually, it looks so good, I kinda wanna make a video with this phone specifically, just because the video looks really good 
You also get a macro mode, dedicated macro mode on here. So if you like that, which I really do like, I like taking macro photos. So I really enjoy that they put that on there. You also do get yourself dual video modes, movie modes, pro modes, tilt shift, time lapse, panoramic, and long exposure. So they're covering all the grounds you need to get very creative with this phone. In addition, they have an improved night mode on here. I have to try that out soon, but I gotta say, they're covering the grounds. Four, three aspect ratio, 16 to nine aspect for those thumbnails, one to one for Instagram, and that full screen for those people who wanna cover the whole display. You got that for yourself as well. So EIS is on board with these cameras. In terms of how they fit off the body, they kinda, they kinda blend pretty well. They're not too thick, they're not too much in the way. So I think they're pretty nice. Also, they got a nice little shine in there. Got that stove top look, but they're premium looking. It looks good. Overall, I think it's a solid camera setup. I'm not blown away. It's not like the best thing I've ever seen, but it's strong. It's pretty strong for this money. Another thing to note is they have a very good fingerprint for this price as well. What I mean by that is that a Samsung phone, for example, or some other cheaper Android phones at this money usually have not as accurate fingerprints. OnePlus is providing you with a very fast premium Oh, there we go. We're missing now just because you want to talk your stuff. But definitely, I find this to be much more in line with something like a Galaxy S22 Plus or a S22 Ultra, something like that. Definitely a lot faster than some of the other ones I've seen. Now, this is an optical, so don't expect the best fingerprint on the market, but it's fast. And I like that about it quite a bit, so very nice. This also supports 5G, keep that in mind if you are planning on buying this phone. And one of the things I have to discuss here is the battery life. Not only does this phone charge at a ridiculous pace, it lasts a long time too. It has a 4,800 milliamp hour battery. Bro, that is a lot of battery juice for a phone that can top up in like 30 minutes. It's ridiculous. This is an amazing phone for the battery experience. I think a lot of people will really like this. So last thing I wanna do here is just kind of take a look at these cases that OnePlus did send out. So, all right, so let's go to open this up and you can see packaged pretty well. And then you can see here is the case, got a little bit of red in there. It says Glacier Mist, designed by OnePlus right there, trademarked. Gonna have a nice grip. It's got a nice uh, texture to it. I think it'll hold it in pretty well and it keeps the phone staying very thin. Not sure I'm a fan of the overall look just yet, but some people might really prefer that look right there. So that is the Glacier Mist. I also should mention before we head up out of here, pretty tactile buttons, they're in pretty good locations. You don't have to reach too high on the buttons. And this does come with a screen protector already pre-installed. You don't gotta worry about getting a screen protector right away, at least not Initially, and I already opened this one up, but this is OnePlus's classic sandstone case. Everybody loves a sandstone case. They started making cases because back in the day, they were making the sandstone OnePluses. Like the whole phone was sandstone. So definitely, and there's still some of them out there that are, but you can see this literally turns that plastic build into a premium build anyway. So. If you were like, okay, I don't really like the plastic build, slap the sandstone case on and it becomes a premium feel. So it just doesn't matter. This is an awesome phone for the money. And I think better than Samsung phones at this price point. Cause what are we getting at that price point? We're getting like a S21 FE? No, thank you. This is definitely playing bigger, definitely. This is a really competitive offering. And I think you're getting so much here for the price. Let me know if you agree, disagree, you don't care, whatever. I just had to show you it. This phone is available now for pre-order and you can get it on all three US carriers. It's also supported on a several Canadian carriers as well. And it does become officially available for sale on September 29th, 2022. So you got plenty of time to get your pre-orders in. It's a fantastic phone right here. Also, you can get it on Amazon and Best Buy. I think I mentioned that earlier. Thumbs up if you love the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you all in the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.